Would you like to use OpenToons' in-betweening tool to help with basic animations to create effects like these with just two drawings? Firstly, I'd like to say that I believe hand animating will always give a better result if you're good at drawing, but if you're not, or if you've got a mechanical movement to animate, then the Animate tool or the Auto Inbetweener is a good alternative. For instance, animating a pendulum. The animation on the left hand side is hand animated, and I was able to add some character to it by having it bob a little at both ends. And the one on the right is animated using the Animate tool, and you can probably easily see the difference. The one using the animation tool, although smooth, is very mechanical, and this can be the problem. It can stand out amongst hand animation. And the same is true for animations from the in-between tool, but it can still be a very good way to add animation. So let me give you the 5 minute overview before I get into showing more detailed ways to use it. And as always, you can find timestamps in the description if you'd like to skip or go back to a section. So firstly you need to understand the difference between adding drawings to a level as shown in the level strip and not necessarily shown in the animation, and then exposing these drawings in the timeline or the X-sheet as frames in your animation. And to set up auto in between, we have to use the level strip and then would later add them to your timeline. And you might already have the level strip showing, but if not, you can add it from the Windows menu. And now just dock it at the right hand side, but you'll notice that you can't actually dock the full height at the right hand side while the screen is maximised. So you need to restore it, and then you can dock it to the full height. Just like that. And the level strip shows thumbnails of each drawing, which is quite handy having them large as we have here, but you can only see 8 drawings at a time. And to animate a slower movement, I prefer to have smaller images in the level strip, so we'll change the size of that. And you can do that in the Preferences dialog, in the File menu, and if you go to the Interface section, under Icon Size, that's the standard size you get, 160 pixels by 90. So I'll just half them down to 80 and 45. And as you notice, there's an asterisk next to Icon Size, so you need to restart OpenToons for this to take effect, so I'll just do that. And now we can see 13 full images instead of the 8 we had previously. So that'll make it easier to set up the in-betweening. So the basics for using the in-between tool is you draw one image on one frame and a different image on the second. You add some blank frames in between and then hit the in-between button. So I'll just add a vector level to do that in. And you can draw using the pen, but for this first example I use the geometry tools. So I'll add a rectangle at the top left on this first frame, and on the next one I'll change that into a circle. Ok, so I'd like the in-between tool to change the image from the square to the circle, but also move it across the screen as it changes. So as I said previously, we need to do this in the level strip, so we just select on the final frame, and then you can either right click, and choose to insert a single frame, or you can go down to add frames to add some blank frames, or you can tap the insert key which is the easiest way. So I just add 10 blank frames in between, so the whole animation lasts for 12 frames. And all you need to do is select on the first frame, you hold the shift key, select on the last, so all the frames are selected, and then you see the in-between button on all of the drawings in between. And you hit one of those, and then you get the interpolation option. And for this first animation, I'll just choose linear, and we'll take a look at the other three in a second. And then hit the in-between button, and you'll see the drawings in the level strip, change from a square down through to a circle as it goes to the right. Now these drawings are set up in the level strip, but we need to expose them on the timeline to get them into the animation. So there's two main ways you can do this. One is to delete frame 12 from the timeline, and then you can select from 2, hold the shift key down to 12, and then click and drag on any of the red boxes here, and you can move that selection of frames into the timeline, and then you have them here. or if I just remove those again, or we can use a couple of shortcuts to expose all of the frames. So what we can do first is select on drawing 1, and you see a little drag handle to the right. If you click and drag that to the right, it extends frame 1 over, then selecting frame number 2, and then we use a keyboard shortcut to change drawing number 1 into drawing number 2, and that's the W key. And if you go to the cells menu item, you can see where that comes from. Pressing W moves to the next drawing in the level, and pressing Q moves to the previous drawing in the level. So, if you just select on frame number 2, and then press W, you'll see it goes to drawing number 2, if I press it again it goes to drawing number 3, 4, 5, 6, and when you get to the top of number 12, it cycles round back to number 1. And pressing Q just goes in the reverse direction. 
So we leave that on drawing number two. And as you noticed before, if you select it on one frame and then use a drag handle, you extend that single frame over. But if you select and highlight two frames that have two sequential drawings on, and then when you drag on the drag handle, it'll continue extending the sequence of drawings. And if you go further than the number of drawings there are, they show in red. So you simply drop back down to 12. And now if you play the animation, you see the square turn to the circle as it moves across the screen. And for simple animations, I'll show you another shortcut that helps to test them. If you highlight all of the frames, and then right click and go to edit cell numbers, if you choose swing, it'll then add the same frames you've selected, but in reverse order. So this means you've now got a cycling animation, where the square turns to the circle, and then reverses back to the square, back to frame 1. So you can hit the loop play and watch the animation continue. So that's the basic way auto in between him works, but there are some issues you'll have to bear in mind, and solutions to them I'll show you in a sec. But first let me show you the three other spacing options. OK, so I've got four levels here, all going from identical squares through to identical circles. But you'll notice if I press play that the speed of the change is different for each one. Now I won't go into this in great detail, but it gives you a bit of basic control over how quick the change happens. So if I change the order of the layers to match the on-screen animations, so the ease in and out is at the bottom, then it's ease out just above it, ease in above that, and linear at the top. So you can see the second and fourth move out from the beginning slower, and that's because they've got ease in for the animation. And the bottom two items arrive at the circle a little slower because they've got ease out. Now the in-between tool doesn't give you any control over this, but it's a good start. And once the auto in-between drawings are created, you can of course add your own in-between drawings to extend the animation, or to slow down parts of it. Or you can hold the drawings in the animation by just extending the frames as they're shown. So if I extend the extreme drawings on frames 1 and 12, and then perhaps make frames 10 and 11 work on 2s, and on the opposite side, 10 and 11, so they'll move slower. So if I hit play, so that's the basics of the auto in-betweener, but you'll almost never have to in-between such simple shape, so let's take a look at more complex in-betweening. So with anything more than a simple shape, the in-betweening works by in-betweening lines in the order they were drawn, so you have to make sure that you draw them in the same order. So let me show you how this can affect your in-betweening with an example. OK, so that's the in-betweening complete. You can probably see from the level strip that the in-betweening goes wrong. And if I just play the animation, you can probably see what happens there. So I'm trying to move from a smiley face to a sad face. And when I drew the smiley face, the order I drew it in was the outside of the head first, then the left eye as we look at it, then the right eye, then the nose, then the smile. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And when I drew the sad face, I do the left eye first, then the head, then the right eye, then the nose, then the mouth. So this was one, two, three, four, five. So as we move through the animation, you'll notice the right eye, the nose, and the mouth in between OK, but the left eye and the head change places. So the order you draw your strokes is really important. And if you can remember the order when you draw the second drawing, that's great. But there's two techniques you can use to help you. And the first one is guided drawing. And guided drawing is useful when you've got a hand-drawn look that you want to maintain, and it's more useful for organic, non-mechanical things. So I'll just draw the same face change again. So let's draw the first drawing. And then we'll go to the second frame. And for guided drawing to work, you need the onion skin on. So I'll turn that on. And then you just right-click, and go to Vector Guided Drawing, and then you've got three options. And the one you want most often is Closest Drawing. And this shows the Vector Guided Marks for the drawing nearest the current frame that has Onion Skin turned on. The Furthest Drawing, as you can imagine, shows the drawing furthest from the current frame, but still has the Onion Skin turned on. 
And finally, old drawings shows all the drawings that Onion Skin turned on. And I'll quickly just show you that now. Okay, so if we go to the Vector Guider Drawing option and choose the closest drawing, nothing's shown at the minute. And that's because there's no onion skin turned on for the previous frames. So if I turn on the onion skin for all the previous frames, you'll notice for frame 5 that has the letter E, there's some little marks on it. And this shows the first stroke that you made, with the red mark being the start of the stroke, and the blue arrow showing the direction of the stroke. Okay, so if I change this to the furthest drawing, it shows the first frame, which is the letter A. And again, you can see the red start position, and it's circled around here, and then back down to the end. And if I show all frames, you can see the first stroke for all the frames. And for the letter B and D, you can see I made them in two separate lines. So the first line for B goes down, and the second line will be the circle, and for D, it goes around, and the second line will be the line. So if I draw a single stroke, it'll only show the mark for the second stroke. And if I'm between from this B to the mark I've just made here, the line would rotate over, and the semicircle would just get smaller. Okay, so let's turn that off. And take a look at the face example. So if I show the layer, turn on the onion skin, and then really we only need to change this to be the closest drawing, but all drawings works in this case. So you can see the first stroke I did was an anti-clockwise circle for the outside of the face. So you simply draw the shape that circle changes into, and in this instance I want to keep it roughly the same. So I'll try and trace it fairly well. And then the second line is the eye. Again, that stays the same. Then the second eye. Then the nose. Finally the mouth, going from left to right. So I'll draw the sad face. And then there's no more marks showing lines to transform, so it's back to the Impetrina method. So insert some blank drawings. Select all the drawings, hit in between, choose the interpolation, then again I press W to change drawing 12, round to drawing 2, highlight the first two, and extend them for 12 frames. And again, I'll add the swing, hold the image at both ends, and then hit play. So that's guided drawing. So the next technique is copy paste edit, so let's take a look at that now. So copy paste and edit is best for mechanical items, like opening doors, robots moving, that kind of thing. But it can be used for all kinds of animations where you don't need to add new lines, but just edit or move them. But it can be useful for all kinds of animations where you just make simple edits, especially ones where you don't need the hand drawn look. So let me first give you a very simple example. Okay, so on frame 1 I've drawn some rectangles. If I just select those three and press Ctrl C to copy them and then paste them onto the next frame. Okay, so we can use the Select and Control Point Editor tools to edit these shapes. So again, we just insert some blank frames in between, select them all, choose the in between tool the interpolation method and hit in between and then we'll expose them on the timeline and I'll make a repeating animation again let's extend this out okay so let's see how that looks and you can see the shapes are moving points have been introduced and curves have been introduced so let me just show you a practical example for that so there's one thing you could use this technique for, and that's to animate an opening door and simulate a little bit of 3D. So, on the first frame, we just draw the door. We'll select that, copy it, and paste it onto the second frame. And then using the control point editor, we'll edit the points of the door to try and make it look like it's opening. And we'll also want to show the edge of the door, so we'll add another rectangle I want this at a slight angle as the door's not fully open. And then we'll select that second rectangle and we'll copy that onto the first drawing because it's got to emerge from somewhere. And what we'll do is we'll use the control point editor again to place this on the very edge of the door 
and make it really, really thin by placing the two points on top of each other. Let's try that. So again, we'll insert some blank frames and shift select the final frame to highlight them all. Choose in between. We'll leave it at easing the knees out so it starts off and ends a little slower and hit in between. And let's just expose it onto the timeline. Okay, let's see how that looks. Good, so that's a quick trick to get a simple effect and quite a clear animation of a door opening. And of course I've only given a few simple examples here, but you can use this for much more complex in-betweening. And finally, here's another example where I used auto in-betweening recently. I made a really small animation and wanted to have light rays coming through trees in a forest. And the whole thing is a very subtle animation, and the light rays are especially subtle, but I wanted them to move to show that the tree branches above were moving, and I thought this was the perfect time to use the auto in betweener. Okay, first let me show you the level without the effects. And as you can see, the level is just a number of misshaped rectangles that I later apply a glow, blur, and transparency effect to. So that's the auto in betweener, another tool in your arsenal to be used when the time is right. Really useful to get smooth action and not difficult to use, so why not give it a go yourself? So if you like this video, please like and share to help the channel, and comment below if you have any questions or requests for other tutorials. And if you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you subscribe to be reminded of future tutorials and animations. And I'll be back next Friday with another video. And that's a guarantee. Thank you.